Wow. You can't play it any better than that. Well, you, you, you can't. You might as well say you can't you play defense. You might as well on. can't play defense. After what LeBron has been doing to everybody, well, LeBron started crying about four possessions ago, and he's done it twice without a handkerchief. LeBron is crying, giving it the old, I'm the king. You're making a jester out of me. Nothing better than a Boston accent there. Last night, Celtics color commentator Tommy Heinsohn wasn't a fan, clearly, of LeBron James complaining about the calls he was getting during the Cavs' 89-77 win over the Seas. LeBron finishing with 24 points, seven rebounds, went to the free throw line four times and was called for three personal fouls. Stephen A., does Heinsohn have a point up there in Beantown? I'm sorry, they were in my ear, Molly. I couldn't hear that's, your question. That's okay. I was saying, does Heinsohn have a point? in terms of uh, LeBron there? Well, LeBron was complaining. Um, there's no question about that. But, I, I, you know, it's hard for me to answer whether he had a point or not because what I heard from Tommy Heinsohn is what I always hear from Tommy Heinsohn. Skip, I got a little secret to tell you. I don't know if you know this about me. If I don't watch the Celtics too often unless I have to, all right, because I got other things to do, other teams to cover, et cetera, et cetera. I'll go to, you know, a game occasionally or watch a big game of theirs on television. But I got to tell you, Tommy Heinsohn has always been must-watch television for me. If I know he's calling a game, I don't care if I get to turn it to CSN for five minutes. If I get to listen to Tommy Heinsohn to broadcast his color commentary, as color commenta uh, the color commentator mm -hmm. on their broadcast. I'm going to turn it to that channel. The second I see CSN and Boston Celtics, I'm going to try to find it for five minutes to watch him because I find him to be the most hilarious color commentator in the nation. He is straight comedy. No objectivity whatsoever. I mean, Skip, first of all, let's be honest, and, and I'm not mocking him in any way. This dude is a Hall of Famer as a player with the Boston Celtics, He's a Hall of Famer, coached the Boston Celtics from like 68 to like 70, to, you know, like 69 to like 78. So he's a Hall of Famer as a coach. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. he won a championship as a player, mm -hmm. yep. as a coach. You know, he's been in there as a color commentator. The guy is the only guy in Celtic lore associated with all 17 championships on their resume. This guy is phenomenal. There's no question about that. But I would tell you, he has no objectivity. I Skip. You foul a Boston Celtic. I, Tommy, it's not beyond the pale for the hit Tommy Heights is talking about how you should be arrested for assault. I mean, he takes it to he takes it there, man. The stuff that he says in favor of the Boston Celtics. I mean, you you if if if, if, if the Boston Celtics were on trial for anything, mm -hmm. he never has to worry about being called for jury duty because he'll never say anything <laughs> against them. Everything they do is right. They're always the victim when it comes to Tommy Heinsohn. I mean, and he will go to another, and I'm not knocking him for it. He is a Celtic through and through. If you are a Boston Celtic fan, there is no one on the planet you should love more than Tommy Heinsohn because he is going to support this organization to the end. It doesn't matter what it was. So when I heard him say that about LeBron, I wasn't surprised at all. It's it's the same old Tommy Heinsohn that I've been listening to. He, he just gives it, 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 they, they can do no wrong in this man's eyes. Nothing. They're always the victim. And anybody that's not wear, wearing Celtic green and white is the villain. And it has forever been that way with him. And it will never, ever mm -hmm. change. That's just who he is. Okay. It's who he is, man. I do appreciate the fact that you brought up what a great player he was and a good coach that he was. And by the way, for those yeah. who don't go f nearly this far back, when Tommy came out at Holy Cross, his rookie year, he was voted rookie of the year over his teammate, Bill Russell. That's how good he was coming out wow. of Holy Cross. That's so, right. So he was a really good player just for credibility's sake. Oh, that's important. Now, he has become to Celtic fans what Harry Carey used to be to Cubs fans and before that to Cardinal fans. And as I, I loved Harry, but in the end, he became Harry caricature, right? Because he was a little bit, he was so over the top that he became sort of 
laughable. And some, some nights, Tommy Heinsohn, and I watch him a lot, can be laughable with his lack of objectivity. Okay. I give you that. But I also watch a whole lot of direct TV basketball games in various cities in which I get to hear the local color analysts. And nobody would have the guts to do what he did last night, which was to call out the king. And I must tell you, as I was watching, I stood up and gave Tommy a standing ovation because LeBron deserved to be called out. Again, they were pulling away. They, they played one of their, it, it might be the best game Cleveland's played all year. There was obviously some bad blood from last year's playoff series, the, the injuries going both ways. But I thought that, that last night, once Cleveland took charge, LeBron did start crying. And he can be, to quote Tommy, a crybaby. And he was, as Tommy said, crying without tears. And he was, in the end, the king saying, you're turning me into a jester. And I loved it all because last night it wasn't over the top. It was true. So thank you, Tommy, for having the guts or the lack of objectivity, however you want to portray it, as calling out LeBron when he deserved to be in ways that well, no other local visiting commentator or, or the, the, uh, the opposing team commentator would ever call out LeBron. He did it. Well, well, first and it was of, right. Well, first, of all, first of all, LeBron James was complaining about a call. He was complaining People, about every call. Players, players do that all the time. That's number one. Number two, Magic, I heard Tommy say that about Magic Johnson. And let's not act like nobody on the Celtics ever complained. I mean, who, who, who looked like they were crying more than Danny Ainge when he was playing? Great, now you're going way back, I, I, but not this I'm current just saying, team. I, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm making the point yeah. that we don't hear Tommy Heinsohn bringing that up. I never heard Tommy Einstein sit there and say, stop crying. When Tommy, you know, when somebody is crying on the boss, it's like when Paul Pierce is, is complaining, when, when Rondo or Ray Allen or somebody complained, or when, or when Doc Rivers complained, when Tommy Einstein, you go get him. Absolutely right. How could they do that? I mean, this is who he is. I mean, he has, it's, it, I'm not, you might stand up and applaud because that's what you want to do with all things LeBron, especially if it's getting at him. But the point is, Tommy Einstein, uh, it's not like he's the paragon of objectivity. This I, Don't sit there and say, occasionally, you know, he can go over the top. Occasionally, he's, he's not objective. Please. It, uh, subjectivity is his middle name. I mean, what are you talking about? It defines this man when it comes to the Boston Celtics. And I don't mind. I don't want it to be misconstrued as me getting on Tommy Heinsohn. He's fantastic. Who the hell am I to get on him? I love listening to him. I always go to shake his hand. He's a gentleman. I love talking to him about the Boston Celtics on a rare occasion that I've had the honor and privilege to do so. I have profound respect for this man. And he is all things Boston Celtics to me. Just don't tell me he's objective. He's not objective at any moment about these Boston Celtics. At any Whoa. Okay, this but points dude of order. Loves his Celtics. Danny Ainge wasn't the king. Even Paul Pierce, as great as he was, was never the king. Rondo certainly was never the king, but the king is the king, and the king got called out last night by the one I, guy who has the guts I, to call him out. Thank I'm you. I'm saying that LeBron James did, you know, Kobe's complain, Magic's complain, you know, I mean, it doesn't matter. If you're not a Celtic and you're complaining about the Celtics, to Tommy Heinsohn, you are crying. That's all I'm trying to say. All right. You're crying. LeBron didn't get any Tommy points. No, he, he, <laughs> he didn't. But, but in the end, he did give some credit to a Kevin Love who got his quote-unquote revenge last night on Kelly Olenek on the floor and on the scoreboard. The movie put on Olenek late in that game, a little up and under. It was sweet. It was nice. Yeah, it was nice. It was and, nice. And, and listen, Kevin Love had a big-time game last night, and that's, that's usually the best way to wreak a little revenge on the guy who pulled your arm out of socket. Right? <laughs> yeah, to put it lightly. Yeah. Yeah. Hansen, Heinsen was elected to the Hall of Fame as a player in 86 and then this year went in as a coach. Up next, Brandon Marshall has an interesting gift for his quarterback, and it isn't exactly light reading. We'll tell you why Brandon was in the giving mood this holiday season. That's next.
I'm a cheat, I'm a cheat, and I put it on the line, I'm a grind.